object from another star system is passing through ours right now and the data show it is releasing 70 kilograms of carbon dioxide every second, but less than five kilograms of water. JWST Spectra reported roughly 70 kilograms per second of carbon dioxide and under five kilograms per second of water, a ratio the team described as unprecedented for a comet at this distance. That chemical imbalance has never been seen in a comet this close to the sun. Discovered in July 2025, this rare visitor was observed by Hubble in late July and by JWST in early August. What could cause this chemistry in material that has traveled for billions of years? Today, we'll unpack the measurements from Hubble and JWST that are challenging long-held ideas about how icy bodies form across the galaxy. Before turning to those results, it is worth asking how astronomers managed to detect such a fleeting object in the first place. Then, the surprise of discovery. Spotting 3IATLAS was a surprise in itself. An interstellar object is a body that originated around another star and is just passing through our solar system. This one is moving at nearly 130,000 miles per hour, leaving astronomers with only a narrow window to observe it before it disappears back into deep space. Atlas discovered 3I Atlas on July 1st, 2025, when it was about 420 million miles from the Sun. That early detection gave researchers just enough time to coordinate observations before the object became too faint to track. Only two interstellar bodies had ever been confirmed before this. In 2017, astronomers detected one, E. Umuamua, a thin, elongated object with puzzling behavior and unknown composition. Two years later, two Iborisov passed through, more clearly resembling a comet with a visible tail. Together, they showed that interstellar visitors could look very different from each other, and that catching even one of them was an exceptional stroke of luck. For many researchers, the prevailing view was that such discoveries might remain once in a generation. Events. That is why the appearance of 3IATLAS created so much attention. ATLAS, the Asteroid Terrestrial Impact Last Alert System, is a NASA-funded survey designed to find near-Earth asteroids and provide impact warnings. Its wide sky coverage also allows it to catch unusual fast-moving objects that would otherwise slip past. Identifying 3IATLAS on routine survey data demonstrated that modern detection networks have now become sensitive enough to record interstellar visitors, not just local asteroids and comets. The difficulty of this task is often compared to noticing a bullet as it flashes across a room. Interstellar objects approach without warning, race past on hyperbolic paths, and offer only weeks or months of visibility. To make the most of such brief opportunities, astronomers worldwide must act immediately. With the three IATLAS discovery notice circulated, major ground-based facilities adjusted their schedules and space-based platforms began preparing observing plans. The quick coordination underscored how each encounter with an object from another star system is treated as a global priority. From the start, scientists could not be sure what kind of object three year IATLAS was. Was it more like a rocky asteroid, or would it behave as a comet with volatile ices releasing gas and dust? Early brightness and activity signs suggested it was cometary, shedding material as it neared the sun, but higher resolution follow-ups were needed to confirm its composition and structure. At that stage, its chemistry, density, and interior shape were all open questions. The discovery carried value beyond a single object. Practically, it showed that surveys like ATLAS can do more than catalogue potential hazards. These networks can now expand our sample of material from other stars. Scientifically, it marked a turning point. Interstellar visitors can be studied in detail, not just spotted once and lost. With that confidence, each new detection builds a comparative record across star systems, shifting expectations from rare curiosities to a growing field of repeatable observations. 
As the campaign turned to advanced instruments, the central question followed. Once Hubble and the James Webb Space Telescope aimed their detectors at this mysterious traveller, what would they uncover about its true nature? Now, Hubble and JWST's puzzling results. On July 21st, 2025, Hubble provided the sharpest image yet of three eye atlas, and what it revealed was both familiar and puzzling. It showed a distinct coma, a cloud of gas and dust surrounding the comet. But rather than a smooth sphere, it appeared as an asymmetric teardrop-shaped envelope about 348,000 kilometers across, with a sunward plume of dust. This detail confirmed the object is losing material under solar heating, which is the defining behavior of a comet rather than an inert asteroid. Hubble placed new bounds on the size of the solid body at the core. Its nucleus was too small to resolve directly, so astronomers relied on brightness models. These models suggest it could be as small as about 1,000 feet, or 320 meters, across, while Hubble's upper limit placed it no larger than 3.5 miles, or 5.6 kilometers. Hubble could not resolve the nucleus directly, so that reported size range is derived from brightness and modeling rather than a direct image. The result is an unusually large coma being driven by what may be a very small body, an efficiency in activity that remains difficult to explain. The telescope also provided evidence of real-time activity. Along with the cocoon of dust, Hubble detected a clear sunward plume where icy grains were venting gas and an emerging though faint tail streaming away from the sun. These features established beyond doubt that 3i Atlas behaves dynamically as a comet, consistent with those from our own solar system, even if it formed in a different star system. Two weeks later, on August 6, 2025, the James Webb Space Telescope measured the object's composition. Using its near-infrared spectrograph, JWST reported strong features of carbon dioxide in the coma and only weak lines corresponding to water vapor. At about three astronomical units from the Sun, roughly 450 million kilometers, solar system comets usually release far more water than carbon dioxide. Water ice sublimates efficiently at that distance, while carbon dioxide normally plays a lesser role. But in 3IATLAS, the numbers showed the opposite. Roughly 70 kilograms of carbon dioxide were measured, leaving the coma every second compared with under five kilograms per second of water. The research team reported this as the highest CO2 to water ratio, yet observed in a comet at around three astronomical units. JWST also identified carbon monoxide along with traces of water ice and carbonyl sulfide, but carbon dioxide was by far the dominant component. The combined picture is clear. 3i Atlas behaves physically like a comet, shedding dust and developing a coma and tail in response to solar heating. Yet chemically, it does not match the expected profile. Its fingerprint is inverted, showing a dominance of CO2 over water that has never before been reported at this stage of solar heating. That contradiction now sits at the heart of the mystery. If the activity is so normal in appearance, why is the chemistry so unusual? This is where researchers move from measurement to interpretation, considering what these anomalies might reveal about the conditions in which this object first formed. Next, unanswered questions and future clues. Three, iAtlas now forces astronomers to ask what its unusual chemistry tells us about the environment it came from and how it has changed on its long journey. Several working hypotheses are on the table each offering partial explanations but leaving open questions. One working hypothesis centers on something called the carbon dioxide ice line. The carbon dioxide ice line is the distance in a young planetary disk where temperatures are low enough for carbon dioxide to freeze into solid ice, but water may remain vapor. A working hypothesis is that three I atlas formed beyond this boundary allowing solid CO2 to accumulate while water stayed mostly gaseous. That would lead to a naturally CO2-rich comet,
explaining the high release rates compared with water when heated by the sun today. An alternative hypothesis is long-term space weathering. Over billions of years, ultraviolet radiation and cosmic rays could gradually erode water molecules from the surface or lock them beneath a crust, while more resilient compounds like carbon dioxide survived closer to the surface. This process could slowly shift the balance, leaving us with today's high C O2 to water ratio. This explanation remains speculative and researchers stress that further observations are essential to test how much space weathering can alter cometary chemistry. Another piece of the puzzle comes not from composition, but from the orbit. Dynamical modeling of three IAT LAS's current trajectory points to an origin in the Milky Way's thick disk, a population of stars and planets significantly older than the thin disk where our Sun formed. If this interpretation is correct, then 3i Atlas could have taken shape more than 7 billion years ago, well before Earth existed. One study estimates its age to be on that order, but the value is model dependent and therefore not settled. At the very least, it suggests we may be observing one of the oldest intact cometary bodies yet seen. To test between these ideas, astronomers will continue close monitoring. As 3i Atlas approaches the Sun, changes in its outgassing rates may reveal whether water vapor eventually emerges in larger amounts or whether CO2 continues to dominate. Instruments like JWST and Hubble will be used for precise spectroscopy, while large ground-based observatories such as Keck will help track its brightness, coma structure and activity. Survey networks and space telescopes like SWIFT and TESS will supply complementary coverage each observation can help discriminate between competing hypotheses and trace how the comet evolves with solar heating. These efforts highlight why interstellar visitors matter. Each one carries chemical and physical signatures from other planetary systems, giving us clues about conditions we cannot otherwise access. 3. I-Atlas shows that such bodies can be detected in time for coordinated study, moving them from rare curiosities into a growing sample for comparative planet formation science. And this sets up a broader perspective. When astronomers plan to follow three IEATLAS with fleets of telescopes, they are not just studying a single comet. They are demonstrating what it looks like to examine material born around other stars, evidence carried briefly into our reach before vanishing back into interstellar space. Conclusion, Hubble and JWST have now given us a first detailed look at 3i Atlas. Hubble showed a teardrop-shaped coma and placed an upper limit on its nucleus at 3.5 miles, or 5.6 kilometers, with models suggesting it could be as small as 320 meters. JWST measured the gases driving this activity, about 70 kilograms per second of carbon dioxide, but less than 5 kilograms per second of water at roughly three astronomical units from the Sun. These findings matter because they offer a chemical sample from another planetary system and raise testable hypotheses about whether formation conditions or long-term weathering explain its unusual composition. If you found this useful, subscribe for follow-ups as the Hubble and JWST campaigns continue and leave a comment. Which origin hypothesis? Formation beyond the CEO or oats to ice line or long-term space weathering, do you find more plausible? It is an extraordinary opportunity to sample material from another star system. A brief messenger reminding us that science often begins with more questions than answers.